Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our series on mental health and spirituality with Dr. Peter Malinowski. Dr. Malinowski, do you want to explain who you are? <laughs> okay, I'm a clinical psychologist um, in private practice in Indianapolis, Indiana. I've been I've been a psychologist for 19 years. I'm also one of the co-founders, along with Dr. Jerry Crete, of Souls and Hearts at SoulsandHearts.com, which is our online website that is an outreach in psychology and Catholicism to to the broader community. So it's really for those Catholics, committed Catholics, that are really interested in grounding the practice of psychology psychological understanding in a Catholic worldview. So, Well, great. And today we're going to talk about receptivity and openness. Um, when I hear those two words, they seem pretty synonymous, but in your eyes, you have really specific definitions. That I have us. specific definitions. And it's great that we start with definitions because, because sometimes they are used synonymously. Um, we're sloppy with language a lot of times in English. Um, and so I want to, I want to emphasize openness as being in the natural realm and receptivity in the spiritual realm. So these are the ways that I'm defining them. So in the natural realm, we have we have openness and openness is considered one of the big five personality traits. When you do factor analytic studies and you, you kind of take a look at how do we assess personality, openness comes out as one of the, the big five. And the other ones are neuroticism, extroversion, um, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. And so openness in the natural realm, when psychologists talk about it, and this is the way that I talk about it, uh, when we're talking about the natural realm, you know, open individuals, the individuals that are open are curious about both their inner and outer worlds, right? They have experientially rich lives. They like different experiences compared to closed individuals. They're also less conventional, right? They're willing to question authority. They're prepared to consider new ethical, social, and political ideas, that kind of thing. So, um, so that's openness, right? It's, right. it's this willingness to entertain new ideas, to consider new values, to look at things from different perspectives. Yeah, that kind of, honestly, when you're saying that and describing that, that just sounds like my personality. <laughs> <That's really weird. laughs> uh, but so are you saying, so that's like a natural personality, like a thing of the brain, but that is not necessarily related to the spiritual realm? Um, I, no, it is related. It's just mm -hmm. when I when you think about what it means to be open in the in the spiritual realm as Catholics, there's a whole different realm that you get into. And so I don't like the word just openness. Mm -hmm. I like the word receptivity because receptivity involves this taking in, this you know this this taking in of grace, for example, or of relationship or of love, right? right? Openness sounds a little bit more like you're window shopping, right? And so open individuals, right, can 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 entertain all these ideas, but they can kind of be like the, uh, the Greeks that Paul was working with. These are interesting ideas. You must come back and tell us more about it someday, right? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't actually stick, right? It can be shallow soil. So one of the advantages of being closed, and this is, this is a, maybe a little surprising because people say, well, to be open is to better be, it's better than to be closed. Well, psychologists don't always look at it like that. Closed individuals are more tenacious about holding on to the particular values, for example, that they think are important. They're more, they're more, um, they're more likely to hold on to particular ideas, right? And that's going to be important when uh, you need to be steadfast in something, right? So, so there's advantages to being open, and there's advantages to being closed uh, on the natural realm. When we're talking about receptivity to grace, though. Um, there's, there's advantages to being receptive as opposed to not receptive, right? So, um, so that's another difference, right? It sounds like you're talking about with openness, you're just open to a lot of different ideas and it doesn't necessarily mean that any of those ideas are good or bad. You're just open to a lot of them and you're just looking and window shopping and it's not, and you may not even grab any of those things. You may not even buy any of those things from the window. You just like looking right. even it's possible. Right. And right. So the receptivity is not like linked to an open or closed person, but receptivity is linked to, is this being received? Is this grace is this being, being received? Yeah. Is, is this, this information is it, being received? Yeah. Is it exactly. actually soaking am into I, the noggin? <laughs> am I tolerating being loved? And we got to do we got to do a um, we got to do a whole another show on tolerating being yes, loved because that's a whole will. topic on its own. <laughs> um, in fact, we got that in the lineup. But um, but yeah, it's about are we are we willing to take in and hold right? Because otherwise we you know otherwise it does like I said it doesn't stick. 
So some people pride themselves on being open to everything and committed to nothing, right? <laughs> I had a, I had a, a, one of my dorm mates in college was very much like that. He wanted to hold on to all religions, but didn't want to commit to any of them, right? So, mm-hmm. so, um, so that's that's a significant that's a significant difference. So this openness on the natural realm, it depends on the context as to whether it's whether it's positive or not, right? Mm-hmm. Um, openness in the spiritual realm, this receptivity, we want to be uh, in that. Receptive position in relationship with God, in relationship with our Mother Mary. Great. Yeah. So, can you practically describe what that might look like when you are being receptive with God, receptive with Mary, and maybe can you describe what it would look like for just not being receptive? Sure, sure. So, so one of the things that I'm a big fan of is uh, trying new things in prayer. Right. Uh, to, 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 because we're not going to pray the same way at every point in our spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. Right. So one of the things that would that would indicate a sense of receptivity is a, a willingness to go with something that, you know, that you might be inclined to or trying something that your confessor gives you as a penance. Right. Instead of saying, eh, I don't I don't really want to do that. Can you give me a different one? <laughs> you know, like like stretching ourselves in relationship, and that's the key thing. It's not just about accumulating a huge library and reading a lot of books. It's about receptivity in relationship. Am I listening to God? Am I trusting that God will communicate with me in a way that I'll understand? Am I, am I, do I have confidence that if I try something and it's not really the right thing, that he'll correct me? That if I'm one of the, she- the, the, one of the sheep that strays off because I'm trying something new, will God you know, actually come and find me, right? So one of the things that you need for this receptivity is this confidence in God, this, this uh. childlike trust. Child, children are really open, right? They're really receptive. They will, if they're raised in a reasonably good environment, they'll be open to a lot of different things. They've got this natural curiosity, you know, this this desire, this interest. And when Jesus says, you know, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, part of it is that sense of wonder. It's that sense of awe. It's that sense of curiosity. It's that sense of openness, receptivity that he's looking for in us. Yeah, and I just so. remember... And I want you guys to remember too, when when I was a child and my mom and dad were taking me to like different trips or vacations or different little adventures, I was just so excited. There is no, not, a worry in my, not a worry in the world that could we afford this? Is this safe? Right. That was not right. on my mind at all because right. I just totally trusted my mom and dad to take care of all of that. It just wasn't even a question. I just had right. full trust that they were going to do that. But it seems like I know in my life when I've grown up, when I've gone through college, when I've been out in the working world, when I start to have to take on more responsibilities, it has put me into a, a state where it's hard for me to go back to that child childlike trust. And I know God is calling me, calling all of us to be more childlike, but it sounds like that this hits right into that. And in a way, there's risk and vulnerability there, but maybe it comes down to how are we going to react to that risk? Are we just going to respond negatively or are we going to respond with that positive trust that you're talking about? So much of the faith is experiential, right? Because what 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 are we called to? We're called to relationship, right? That's an experienced thing. It's not just in the mind. It's also in the heart, right? It's also in the body, right? It's in the soul. So it's 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 we've got to be able to have this openness not just in the mind, but also in the heart, which is which is often the hardest for people, right? To be yeah. open emotionally because of why? Because of the wounds, right? There's mm-hmm. been different ways that people have betrayed us or disappointed us. We've all got attachment related injuries, relational, relational wounds. And so it's a deliberate act of the will to be receptive. Openness as a personality trait, you know, that's that's okay. That's sort of what your natural dispositions are. It can be changed. Personality traits can actually change. Mm. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, f- temperamentally, that's, some people are just more open than others, right? I had one of my sons when he was a baby didn't like new things. <laughs> you know, he, he wanted the temperature to be, to be between 68 and 72 degrees and, you know, and no sun. He didn't like the sun. 
right? And, you know, he wasn't open, you know, as a baby of these things. And he grew much more open. I mean, he's, mm-hmm. he's you know, much, much more open now. Um, but, you know, so temperament plays a role in this. Our upbringing plays a role in this. But what I'm really focused on is what do we do with our will, right? Are we going to say yes? And so the example of receptivity, the quintessential example of receptivity in the faith is Our Lady's fiat, right? Mm. She wasn't expecting the angel Gabriel to appear to her and and offer her to be the mother of the savior of mankind. You know, she was, but she was receptive. She asked some questions. She wanted to know what she was getting into, which is a remarkable thing. You have you have this this 14 year old um, this 14 year old woman challenging an angel, right? You know, explain yourself what's going on here. Um, and she says, yes, at the end, be it done, right? Doesn't know all the implications, doesn't understand, you know, that there's going to be a flight to Egypt, doesn't understand that, you know, she knows that, that a sword is going to pierce her heart after the presentation, but she doesn't understand all the implications of this. So that's the kind of receptivity and openness that God would like to find in us. Yeah, it sounds to me, when you just bring this language and this, these definitions and when I think about Mary's fiat, it's really occurring to me that she didn't say yes because it would be this very good plan for humanity necessarily, which it was, and that was probably a part of it. But it seems like most of her yes and most of her trust came because of who the ask was coming from. It was coming from her God who she loved so much, who she trusted so much, and just knew that he was gonna take care of everything. And really the specifics of the ask it really was never going to stop her. And right. we know now, in hindsight, that was probably the greatest decision anyone's ever done. So it was a good call by Mary. But <laughs> she trusted, and she didn't get caught up in the details. I mean, she asked some, like, I would say prudent questions of the angel. Prudent right? questions, yes. Normal yes. good questions. But she didn't get right. caught up in it because of who was asking this of her. That's right. And it goes back to like what you were saying, right? In the in the trip with your parents, you're not worried about whether you've got enough gas to get to yeah. the next <laughs> get to the next town, right? That's in the hands of your parents. They're they're responsible for that. So so we really want to um, we really want to be open we and on a natural level and closed when we need to be. We want to be, you know, kind of both there's a both and there. Receptivity on the spiritual level, though, that's really, really important. So what gets in the way? Fear, uh, shame, anger sometimes. Um, a lot of it is distorted God images, right? One of the, one of the wonderful things about Our Lady, uh, as a function of her um, immaculate conception, this is my belief as a Catholic psychologist, is that she did not have distortions in her God image. Mm. Right? That doesn't mean she understood God perfectly, because the finite cannot understand God perfectly. No, no finite right. creature can. Can you briefly describe but, what a God image is? For so a God reason? image is God, God image is how we feel God to be in our bones. It's our sort of emotional reaction to God. It's our subjective understanding of who God is. This, this is like our, this is like our, our guts sense of who God is. So if we're having a really bad day and we've, we've just got off of work, it's been a really rough day. We're just looking forward to going home, eating our macaroni and cheese, you know, and going to bed and somebody sideswipes us and crushes, you know, the two passenger side doors of our car and the left quarter panel is all tipped, ripped up. We can say, see God, God is like this, right? That in that moment, that's not, that God image is not conforming with our God concept which is um, which is who we profess God to be. That's with our intellect and our will. That's who we profess God to be. So we have these distorted images of God that are operative that have to do with kind of the relational history, the attachment histories that we've had. And so those also make it difficult. If you believe that God doesn't really love you, um, it makes it hard to be open to God, right? So, but the, here's the trick is that he, you won't know it in your bones until you have the experience and God's not going to intrude. He needs to to be asked. He needs to be invited in, which is why receptivity is so important. Some people say, well, when God shows me who he really is, you know, then, then I'll believe, you know, sort of like St. Thomas, right? You know, um, but God is not going to violate your freedom to choose. And so, you know, this is not when we're in this life, every knee does not bend in this life because we have the freedom to, to receive God's love or not. 
Um, and unfortunately, many people, I'll be real honest with you, I, I would say many people, many, many people do not receive God's love. Um, that's, that's implicit in Matthew seven fourteen. Yeah, and I feel, so, like, I feel like with myself and many people that I meet and many people watching this video right now are not receiving God's love, but they don't even know. They don't even know that there's love that they're missing out. They don't even know that they should be receptive to God's love and how life could be different. When we go out onto college campuses and to our parishes, to our family members, to our friends, so many of them have no idea. It's just not even intellectually. They just probably have read books and they just know conceptually, oh yeah, God loves me. Yep, uh, heaven is a thing. Yep, got it. But that experiential uh, God image that you're describing here, that experiential receptivity is just not there. No one has shown them. No one has guided them that this is a thing. And also in our own lives, if we want to be able to spread this to other people, we also have to participate and be more receptive to God. We have to participate in letting him love us and letting that overflow onto other people. We really are just skipping steps, crucial steps. If we don't let work on that relationship with God, if we really want to help other people to experience it, and frankly, in my experience, when I'm living out my relationship with God, other people see that without me even saying right. a word, and they attract right. it to that, and they want that, and they're like, what does he have that I don't? And it gets them curious. Right. Um, so right. the, ma the main question I have here to end things, Dr. Malinowski, is what can we do practically to help ourselves in growing in this area, to, in growing in receptivity to God? Well, I've got a bunch of suggestions. Um, so <laughs> I, do, I do a podcast, and... Um, called the coronavirus crisis carpe diem if you go to um soulsandhearts.com you'll find it there it's also on apple and spotify and google play and places like that uh, but episodes let's see 33 and 34 are all about openness and receptivity and they're each about 40 minutes long so much longer than what we're doing yes. today there's going to a lot more detail <laughs> yeah. a lot more detail about that um but I was wondering if you would be interested in having us do a brief experiential exercise right now around what gets in the way of receptivity. Yeah, uh, let's what do gets it. in the way? You want to do it? Okay. Let's jump in. So I'm gonna. So if you happen to be like um, listening to this while you're driving or something, all right, just use some prudence, right? This is a good thing. It's only gonna take about three, four minutes, but I'm I'm gonna invite you to. And what we're gonna be doing here is we're not actually going to be looking at receptivity. Uh, itself, we're going to look at what gets in the way of it. All right. So this is an exercise to help you understand what your particular blocks are to being more receptive to uh, to the love of God, to God's to God's action in your life. And so we're going to talk about um, connecting with yourself. All right. In the last show we did, we talked about loneliness versus alienation. And now we're going to be doing a little exercise here for you to connect with yourself. And I'm going to inv invite you to just ask this question and then listen to the answer. It's not about thinking about it. It's not about analyzing it. It's not about turning it over in your mind. It's about asking the question and then listening to some part of you respond right? Spontaneously, naturally, right? So I'm going to ask you to, to get into a position here where you're, where you're open to the graces coming down. We're getting into a position where we're going to, we're going to be focused on loving ourselves through understanding ourselves and specifically in understanding and listening to and accepting what keeps us from being more open to God. You might be surprised by the answers that come up when you create a space for this, right? So, so we're going to just take a minute here, take a couple of breaths, deep, slow breaths, because that helps us to calm down, to help us be more relaxed. It kind of clues us in that things are safe. This is okay. We're not actually going to be going very far with this. It's only a brief exercise, but we are going to invite whatever part of you that is resistant to letting God in to tell you why. To tell you about that, to share with you why I'm afraid to let God in. Mm. 
that might be in the form of a word or a memory or an image a sound however that part wants to communicate it with you whatever is in your history that gets in the way of that receiving God into your heart, into your soul, into your mind, into your body. And you might not get a clear message and that's okay. You might be surprised at what you've already, what you've heard already, and that's okay. These parts are trying to protect you when they're trying to keep God out because they don't know who God really is. There's these, there's this confusion. So we don't want to overrun them or overpower them, but we want to rather love them, care for them, and help them understand. And we do that by really listening first. So just check in if you have made connections or contact with a part of yourself that has trouble with the whole idea of relating with God, letting God in, see if there's anything else that that part wants to tell you or to share with you or to show you. And then thank that part for being willing to connect with you. You don't have to necessarily agree with that part's ideas or with its course of action. Acceptance of that part and understanding where it at, where it is, doesn't mean that you endorse it. But it helps to reduce the disconnects inside of you. Help you be more integrated and better able to move forward, make decisions in your life of prayer, in your way of, um, and in your way of relating with God. And now you can have, if you've gotten some ideas, you've gotten some ideas of what's been holding it back. It's now you're better equipped to actually take that to our lady, take that to your guardian angel or to take that to God himself. Well, that was great. <laughs> yeah. And is this, is this up on YouTube? People can comment if they want, right? Yeah, is there comment. a place, you know, if you helping, feel comfortable sharing, stick out. yeah. 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 Um, and, uh, and I'll try to figure out, you'll send me a link. I'll try to figure out like if there are comments, I may be able to get over here and respond to some of them as well. So yeah, absolutely. So if you like that kind of thing, if you really resonate with that kind of exercise, which is really short, we do all kinds of stuff like that with the coronavirus crisis Carpe Diem podcast, and especially with the resilient Catholics Carpe Diem community, which is a community of faithful Catholics that are really invested in psychological growth in the natural realm and spiritual growth. We're working together to uh, to overcome psychological obstacles, to being able to take God's love in, and to being able to love God and neighbor in return. So if you if that floats your boat, come and check that out as well. It's at soulsandhearts.com. Yeah, and we'll link to those podcast episodes that dive deeper into this topic, much deeper than we went to. If this really resonated with you, please go and see and listen to Dr. Malinowski's resources. It'll help you out a lot. Um, and please, just like the three-minute exercise we did just now, I know it helped me just now, continue to do these things. Continue to get to know yourself more. And frankly, this gives you really good stuff to bring to God in prayer and just become more integrated, as Dr. Malinowski said. I'd like to do a whole course sometime. I haven't got it done yet, but I'd love to do a whole course sometime on the examination of conscience that's psychologically informed. There's so much that we can learn about the examination of conscience from St. Ignatius of Loyola, uh, the particular examination of conscience, general examination of conscience. But when you bring in psychologically informed ways of connecting within, it becomes really, really powerful, and it, and it, it brings a whole new dimension into it. So. 
That yeah. is so great. Well, Dr. Monowski, thank you so much for taking the time for this video. Um, yeah. And remember, everyone, to go to his resources uh, to get much more detail. This is really just like a, a sampler for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's great to be able to do it. It's great to be able to be with you, Trevor, on this. And it's great to be able to reach out to the audience, too. Post your questions in the in, in the comment box. I'll, I'll, I'll come over. I'll answer a bunch of them. So. Perfect. Yeah. Well, everyone, thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you next time.